Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Great news. Municipal bylaw information is now available from Drone Pilot Canada. Also, aerodrome circuit patterns have been added. Let's check it out. Yes, we've added two important features to Drone Pilot Canada in version 3.4. If you've already purchased Drone Pilot Canada, this update is absolutely free, as always, and is available in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. If you have automatic app updates set up, you'll see version 3.4 appear on your device within a day or so of this video. The first new feature is the availability of municipal bylaw information directly from within the app. A team of us researched the largest 100 municipalities in Canada, rummaged through their bylaw libraries for drone-related stuff, and came up with links. And we boiled the bylaws down to a very short summary with the full document available with a simple tap. Let me show you how this works. When we have bylaw information, you'll see an area like this showing the boundaries of the, muni the municipality. In this case, it's Cambridge, Ontario. Tapping anywhere within the boundary will display the municipal bylaw summary. If there's aerodrome or airspace information as well, the bylaw stuff will be at the very bottom of the list. We show what I call the unofficial summary of the bylaw. In this case, it says drone use in parks requires a permit allowed in designated areas, meaning there are some parks with set aside areas for drones or RC aircraft, but otherwise you'll need a permit to legally fly in a Cambridge city park. The note also says tap for more information. And if you do that, the actual bylaw document will come up and you can look through it and find the pertinent details. Every city's bylaws are different. In Cambridge, it says under games, sports, and organized activities that while in a park, no person shall, then scrolling down to clause I, practice archery or operate power model aircraft, except in areas set aside and signed for such purposes and in accordance with the sign. Now, why archery and model aircraft are lumped together, I have no idea. But that's how this particular bylaw was constructed. And yes, drones would, would in fact be interpreted as being model aircraft. Now, in addition to being shown on the map, the municipal bylaw summary and the link will appear in flight plans or site surveys when your flight area intersects with the municipal boundaries. I want to emphasize that the summary we display is best effort. Bylaws change from time to time, and we have no way of keeping these things up to date other than by crowdsourcing it. So if you see something new or changed, please let me know by sending an email to dondroneson at gmail.com. Similarly, if you live in a community with a drone-related bylaw and you would like it added to the app, just drop me a line with the particulars, especially a link to the bylaw itself, please. By the way, if you live somewhere that has particularly onerous bylaws related to drones or RC aircraft, and you're wanting to approach your city council to have the bylaw changed, let me know. DPAC is willing to support you in this kind of endeavor with recommendations and backup material. Certainly, in my mind, any city demanding a permit to fly a drone in a park is living in a previous century. At most, such bylaws should be changed to something simple like RPAS pilots must follow Transport Canada regulations, must peacefully share the park with other visitors, and must not harass wildlife. I know this has nothing to do with the app, but I thought I'd throw it out there, since this project has revealed some pretty nasty bylaws. Anyways, on with Drone Pilot Canada version 3.4. The second new feature is related to manned aircraft traffic circuit patterns around aerodromes. The normal circuit pattern at most aerodromes looks like this, with aircraft making left-hand turns as they circle the airport before landing. This is called, quite naturally, a left-hand circuit and is the default unless explicitly stated in the CFS airport listing. Right-hand circuits, the opposite, are called out for about 13% of all aerodromes in Canada. In these cases, the CFS listing will have a statement in the pro or procedure section of their listing in the CFS that says which runways have right-hand circuits. 
Usually this is just a simple statement like this one in Bella Coola, but sometimes it gets more complicated like this one involving gliders. So what we've done in Drone Pilot Canada to keep it relatively simple for drone pilots is to include any statements about right-hand circuits directly in with the rest of the airport information, just prefixed with the term pro like this. That way, any of these right-hand circuit designations are immediately available to you without searching around, whether you're just clicking on the map, doing an airspace assessment, or generating a flight plan or site survey. Simple. Now, I'm sure you may be wondering, who cares about the circuit direction? After all, manned aircraft and airport circuits are, well, they're supposed to be well above the maximum altitude for drones, and we're supposed to keep out of their way regardless of which direction they're flying. So who cares? Well, it's just one more bit of information to help with your situational awareness and flight reviewers like to ask about circuit directions for some reason. And now you'll know the answer instantly. There we have it. New features for municipal bylaw information and circuit pattern designations. Drone Pilot Canada, built by Canadians for Canadian drone pilots.